Good morning, everyone. I'm Barry Pitts with Henrico Recreation and Parks, and I'm so glad to be here with you today. I'm glad you've signed up for our virtual programming classes. There are lots to be seen in the future. Today, I brought my fun box, and inside were all the ingredients for salt painting. So let's get started. And if you have any questions during the program, you can type them into the Q&A box. We'll answer them as we go along or we'll save them to the end. So, what you will need is some cardstock or cardboard, either one, but you do need a heavy material. You're going to need salt, you're going to need some type of glue. It can be a tacky glue or it can be a school glue, either one. You're going to need some watercolors and a little bowl of water for your paintbrush. You'll also need a pencil and it doesn't matter whether it has an eraser or not. The first thing we're going to do this morning is we're going to draw a simple picture. The way we're going to do this is because we're going to use a simple picture, we're going to have a lot of lines, not a lot of detail. You may go back later and add detail if you like. So let's get started. I'm going to draw a house. Pretty simple. There's the roof and the walls. I might even add a door. Then, let's see, on this side, I think I'll draw a sun. It's a nice sunny day today. I hope everybody gets able to go outside and play it sometime. And we'll add some grass, just some lines. So after you've drawn your picture, you're going to take your glue. And you, as I said, you can use either kind, school glue or a tacky glue. I prefer a tacky glue because it gives a more raised line for the salt to adhere to. So that's what I'm going to use this morning. But I'll show you something done with the school glue in just a few moments. So we're gonna take our tacky glue and we're going to go over each line and drop glue. So we're gonna start with the roof. We're gonna go all the way up and then come down the other side. And you wanna make sure you've got a nice line of glue. Next, I'm gonna do the wall. Start on this side and come down. Then I'm going to do the door. And I think I'll add just a little drop of glue for a door handle. There we go. Next, I'm going to do the sun. I'm gonna go around the circle I drew, making sure I've got a good line of glue on that. And then my sun rays. Line each one of those. And as I said before, you can draw any type of picture. You can draw squiggle lines, you can draw straight lines, but then you're gonna come over it with the glue. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to take a bowl or a tray or even a box top will do. And we're going to lay our picture in that tray or bowl or box top. 
we're going to take our salt now and we're going to sprinkle it all over our glue. So you're gonna cover that picture with salt. So you almost can't see anything but salt. Because you wanna make sure it's good and covered. All right? You're gonna wait about five seconds. So let's count together. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to take the edge of our picture and we're gonna lift it up and let the salt fall into the box top or the tray or the glass dish. And just gently knock off any excess salt. We're gonna set the salt aside. Now this can be used again for any type of art project, but we don't want to put it back in the salt shaker because we've had our hands on it, okay? And it's been in the glue. So now we have our picture. So now here comes the interesting and fun part. You're going to take your watercolors and you're gonna dip your paintbrush in the water to get it wet. Then you're gonna choose a color. Let's see, let's do purple first. And so you wanna do your purple paint. And you don't wanna use a lot of water because when you do, it dilutes the color. So just barely get it wet, okay? And then you're going to not paint with a brush, but you're just going to gently dab it. Let's see, my purple didn't show up. Let's see here. Here we go. And you're just gonna tip the paint in. All right, purple doesn't wanna work this morning. Let's try green. Here we go. You see the green grass and I'm just laying it in? Keeping the paintbrush wet with paint, just lay it on top. And the salt is absorbing the paint. Continue with this. Laying it right on top. Just moving the paintbrush. And you can see, as you're doing this, the line of paint moving on down. You can also see why doing something with simple lines is best. <clears throat> there you go. Well, that one did really well. Here we go. See it traveling? term for that is actually called bleeding. It bleeds down. And there it went up because those two pieces of grass were joined together at the bottom. Another reason for using a heavy paper or cardboard while doing this art project is because of the bleeding it will transfer. So you don't want it to do that. So you want to use that heavier medium of paper. And remember, you're just dabbing. Watch, see it moving? Isn't that cool? That's the science part of absorption. Yeah. There we go. I'm 
us finish with our grass. Then we'll go back to the house. We'll get another color there. It's working better than our purple was earlier. Remember, if you have any questions while we're doing this, you can type them into the Q&A box on the screen. I like to watch it travel on down the line. It's really cool. Okay, we have, we have a question online. Let's go for it. I'm gonna turn my paper around so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Good question. Someone has asked, what if you don't have any watercolors at home? If you have food coloring, that will work just as well. What you want to do is take about a half a cup of warm water and then you want to add 10 to 12 drops of food coloring in the water and gently stir it around. You need the colors to be intense because the darker they are, the brighter they're going to show up on your salt painting. Okay, so yeah, if you don't have watercolors, you can still do this with all kinds of food coloring. And that's another cool thing because you can make different colors with your food coloring. If you have red food coloring and yellow food coloring and you put those two together, what color do you think you might get? Orange, that's right and blue and red would make purple, just like I'm using now. So yes, if you don't have watercolors at home, you can make this with food coloring. And if you didn't have a paintbrush, as long as you had like a Q-tip, you could do it as with that. You can actually use a pipette, but you need to have control when you use the pipette because you're dropping water into or the colors in, onto the picture and you don't want to get too much at one time. Okay, so we've done a little purple. Let's add a little orange. Let's see what orange looks like. I'm gonna have a colorful house. Someone's asked what my favorite color is. Well, I happen to have two. The first one is green. Green's one of my favorite colors because when you look outside at nature, and I have a window right here, when you look outside, you see a lot of green. Green kind of anchors our earth. We have the oceans, which are blue, but we have lots of green. We have lots of green grass, we have green trees, we have green shrubbery. The other one that I like is a bright color, and it's red. Red's my favorite color, one of my favorite colors as well. Thank you for asking that question. Someone's asked if I was the same person that did the Billy Goat's Gruff story. Yes, I am. I hope you enjoyed that. Storytelling and reading stories are one of my most favorite things to do. I have two grandsons and I love reading with them. And I love reading to preschoolers. I think it's so much fun 
Reading is such a wonderful way to travel when you don't have any place to go or you don't have, you can't get in the car and go. You can go on an adventure reading. You can go anywhere in the world. You can ride along on a boat. You can just go and pretend and have such a wonderful time. See how it's bleeding? It's still going along. Let's see. There we go. We're just laying our paintbrush down. Yes. Someone has asked if the salt dissolves. It does not. The glue holds it in place and the salt absorbs the color. Uh, it doesn't melt. We're, um, we're not adding that much liquid to it. And it's just kind of setting on top and bleeding down and across. That's why, one of the reasons I think when you use a thicker glue, like a tacky glue, it, um, you can see it because it's raised. The glue sets up and so it holds the salt a little more secure. I'm going to show you in just a few minutes another picture done with school glue. And it worked, again, it works well. It just doesn't sit up quite as much. It's not quite as puffy. Let's do our yellow. Yes, a follow-up salt question. What is that? No, you don't want to use, you want to use just a table salt and it doesn't matter if it's iodized or not. Um, but you don't want to use like an Epsom salt. That would be um, more soluble so it's going to dissolve quick you know, it's going to dissolve. It's not going to set up like table salt will. That was a great question to ask. Okay. Well, that's a good question. Someone's asked, how long will it take to dry? That is actually the hardest part of this art project because it does take a full day to dry. And you can do this one or two ways. You can do as I've done this morning, put the salt on top of the glue and then do your painting or you can draw your picture, cover it with glue, cover it with salt, and then let that dry and come back and paint it. Either way will work. I just kind of like this because you get to kind of see your finished picture while you're doing everything and then let it dry. But it really doesn't matter which you do. And I'm going to set this aside now. I haven't quite finished my sun, but you can see how everything has bled and traveled. And I'm going to set this aside. This will take about 24 hours, like I said, to dry. And when it's finished, you'll have a picture like this. This is a little different. And then so is this one. This one was done, and I didn't paint the inside. It's just the outline of a duck. And then with this one, 
we did flowers and we painted inside. And this one I painted while it was still wet. So everything was done at one time and then it was set aside to dry. This one done on cardboard was done the same way. And you can see how the colors have bled together. I had kind of a red and a purple, but right here kind of turns pink. And then I went in and I painted the petal. With this one, I waited until everything had dried. And then I went back and painted. The one I want to show you just as a demonstration real quick, you might, you probably can't see this, but this is lots of lines and squiggles. And the glue is on here and the salt is on here and it dried. It's been drying for a little over a day. So let's try this one. This will show you what it is when you do it with dry glue and dry salt. Also, this one is done with the school glue rather than the tacky glue. So it's not setting up quite as high, but I think you'll, you'll like what you see. So we're gonna start this one, and we're gonna start here. Let's, the blue is really light. But it does the same thing, it just travels along. It still would take some time to dry, but it wouldn't take quite as long because you've already let the glue and the salt dry together. Okay? Put some green. And these are squiggles. So you can see, let's get to a squiggly part. We're going around here. And again, you're just dabbing your paintbrush. You're not pulling it. You want to dab it so the salt doesn't rub off. Okay. Let's come with another color. Let's do purple. Okay. Someone has asked if you could paint on the paper and then layer the salt on afterwards. Yes, but if you wanted a color to show up, you'd have to choose a light color for your undercoating and then come back so it sat up and it showed through. You wouldn't want to use the same colors. You do want to use either watercolors or the food coloring, as I spoke of earlier. Um, markers won't work. Um, they don't spread as easily, and so um, it pulls the salt off of the painting. So markers will not work in this art project. But you can see, you can see how that looks. So. You can get really creative and again, mix colors, or you can do one line. And then afterwards you can come back and I'll pick up this one. As you can see with this one, and this one looks really nice too. As I said, it just doesn't set up quite as much as with tacky glue. With this one, I've, since it's all done, I can come back and I can color inside and add a little different texture. This one's gonna be a flat, but the balloon edges set up on the side of it.
And then I could add anything to my picture that I wanted. I could add a background, I could add a sun, I could add clouds, whatever. So I hope you've enjoyed this art project this morning. If you would like more directions on it that you might have missed while we were going over everything, please refer to our henrico.us slash rec and you can find this recording. Thank you so much. Please come back and join us for lots of other fun activities that we have planned for adults, for children, for teens, lots of different things, history, nature and outdoors, more creative arts, exercise, just getting out and having fun with one another while we're in this new world. Take care. See you later. Bye.